I want to show everyone how to perform time series analysis model in Python and the Jupyter Notebook in this video. Uh, I found some people would like to develop their own course to perform time series analysis. In my opinion, that's reinventing the wheel. I really don't think it's necessary. If there is available package, Python package on the internet, you can use it directly. You don't have to develop your own course. Our job is to get the job done. It's not to make our job more complicated. I found that the stats model package for Python time series analysis is very useful. So I want to show you how to use the stats model package in this video. By the time when this video is recorded, one weakness about the stats model package is it's a very powerful package, but uh, I didn't find uh, uh, enough examples to show the users how to use the stats models. So I dig into the package a little bit more. When I explored this package, I felt like a hunter in a no person land. Everything is unknown, right? But after I figure out how to use the package, I feel it's so interesting. Let me show you how to use the stats model package. I will upload this Python code script and the source data to this video's description section. You can download both of them onto your computer and then take a look at it. I will not read uh, each line of codes one by one. Let me just uh, give you an overview of this uh, script, and then you should be able to read it uh, by yourself. The script is very straightforward. I also made some notations to explain what the purpose of each line of code. You can read it by yourself. When you perform time series analysis, you need to go through four major steps. First, you want to import the required package and the source data, and then you want to visualize the original data set. The reason is we want to check if there is a long-term increasing or decreasing trend in the data set. I already did that on top of this data set. As you can see, we don't have a long-term increasing or decreasing trend. Some classmates may say, OK, I found a, a significant dip in the middle. Should I ignore it? The answer is yes. Even though we have a dip in the middle, we cannot find a long-term consistent increasing trend or decreasing trend. So we, we will assume that we don't have to do differencing in this data set. If you do see a long-term increasing or decreasing trend, you need to do differencing of this data set. At the end of the script, I showed you an example of how to perform differencing by using the stats model package. If you do need a differencing, you can follow this example to do the differencing. For this data set, we don't need to do differencing. This is the first step. Visualize the original data set to check if you have a long-term decreasing or increasing trend. Next, you want to go to step two. We will be using the ACF and the PACF charts to identify which model we should use for this time series analysis. Is that AR, MA, or ARMA? What is the order for the model we choose? I have already recorded a video of how to use ACF and the PACF chart to identify the model. If you haven't studied that video, I will list the video link in this video's description section. Please study it so that you will know why we choose a model by using the ACF and the PACF charts. If you have studied that tutorial, you will find that we should choose AR1 model for this data set. This is the second step. Use ACF and the PACF chart to identify the model. The third step is to perform the analysis model. We already have the function given by stats model package 
So we can use the functions directly to build the model, as you can see in this script. And here is the final result. We have the coefficients for the constant term and the AR1 term. According to the p-value analysis, both of them are significant. So we can bring both of them into the final equation. Writing down the equation is not necessary unless your professor asks you to do so. So how can we bring this result into the final equation? One point I want to remind everyone is the constant coefficient is actually the mean value of this time series. So when you bring in this value, 14.59, into the AR1 model, you have to subtract this 14.59 on both sides of the equation. I have also recorded a tutorial video to explain why we need to subtract this value on both sides. I listed the video link down below. If you haven't studied it, you can take a look at it. Eventually, we can write the function like this. x sub t minus 14.59 equals to 0 0.68 times parentheses. Inside of the parentheses, you have x sub t minus 1 minus 14.59. And then the closing parentheses, eventually you have to add the error term epsilon t. Notice that uh, sub t represents uh, the subscription of x factor. Sub t minus 1 also the subscription of uh, the x factor. I couldn't write uh, the subscription in a mathematical format by using notebook. So I will use uh, sub, sub to represent this subscription. And then we uh, arrived at uh, the final step, forecasting. That model is very considerate. Uh, it's already provided a function called the forecast, as you can see in this script. If you want to forecast the tomorrow's value, you give one to this forecast function. If you want to forecast the tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, you give two to the forecast function. And then eventually you can find the, the forecast value. This is how you use the stats model package to perform time series analysis and forecast the value based on your analysis. So happy to develop this tutorial. I think it will help other users when they use the stats model package. Uh, one last thing is this model is a non-seasonal time series analysis model. Later, I will also record a video to show you how to perform seasonal time series analysis. Stay tuned. Once the video is ready, I will list the video link in this video's description section. Or an easier way, you just subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. Once the new tutorials are available, you will receive notification immediately.